context. Uh, so there's a, a useful um, basic theorem to keep in okay, mind. Okay, so I'm in seminar one. I never understand the recurring function. Why? Is this? <laughs> is this for a different? Um, oh. Well, no, I'm only thinking. I think Ryan makes everything recurrent, and that's probably where we got it from. So, like, I would, I would. Uh, is there something we can do? <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to mute. I don't know what happened. Okay, I'll try to talk over them for the students. I mean, any postdocs will follow the same thing. No. Uh, postdocs has their PhD, but they haven't gotten that professor title yet. Um, appointment, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> like, they're both doctors if you need it for like uh, title purposes. Mm -hmm. Got them moving. So, okay. So we say G involves H if and only if there's a closed subgroup G zero of G and a closed uh, closed normal subgroup of G n of G zero such that uh, G zero mod n is isomorphic to H. And how this relates to classification strength, this is a basic fact of uh, Mackey and Horth. Uh, if G involves H, then uh, H is below G in classification strength. So every action of H can be lifted to an action of G in a very canonical way. So this is actually much weaker way of stating the, the result. Uh, so right. So there's a, a weekly universal countable group. So there's a countable group that involves all the other countable groups. There's a weekly universal um, TSI. Polish group, which involves all of these. Uh, there's actually, there isn't one for uh, CLI. This is a result of Malitsky. Um, but, and then S infinity is weakly universal. So S infinity involves all, all of these. So these, this point is gonna be ab above all of these in classification, classification strength and so on. And then we have some, just some basic facts. So. C2 the omega is, is compact, so it's actually below the trivial group classification strength. Uh, Z the omega is not below any countable group. So I think this is uh, fourth Pecker's Louveau. I'm, I'm not completely sure. Um, As a result of a, a result of fourth, uh, S infinity is not is not below um, any CLI group. Uh, and then, uh, so I'm not going to talk about these. I just want to give some some motivation. Uh, Z wreath Z is not below any TSI group. So just among uh, the non-Archimedean groups, uh, I put this in my thesis, and then with um, Aristoteles, we generalized to all TSI groups.
so uh, this picture, this this group is really down here. If this picture were of a classification string, um, yeah, but this group is, is strictly above, not strictly above, it's not in, in the TSI, um, and so on. So that, that's that's uh, the context. Um, another bit of uh, context is uh, there's a, is, is we want to understand when when is a group going to be CLI and, and and so on. Is there like a are there other equivalent statements? So actually, this is not just Gal. So if G is the automorphism group, some structure M, you have that uh, G, is, G is CLI, if and only if uh, there's this an uncountable model of the Scott sentence of M. So Gao proved this equivalence. Uh, there exists an, a non-trivial L omega one omega Embedding of M into M, then this is Gao. And then there's a, a rank function that detects this. Uh, it does not, sorry. Does not exist on kind of model, does not exist on trivial embedding. Uh, there's some rank function, which uh, I'll mention later, that detects when uh, GSCLI. So this is uh, Deisler. a student of um, John Baldwin. And equivalently, as, as these kind of rank functions usually behave, it's equivalent to being less than omega one. So we have a lot of uh, seemingly- uh, I'm, I'm gonna uh, define a rank function later where I'll easily be able to tell you what what this would be. So the rank function later is going to be um, going to build up, build up of this one. Um, it's a model theoretic type rank rank function. Yeah, similar kind of. Uh, yeah, the Scott sentence is now omega one omega. Sentence. Yes. So I, I, I like these characterizations because it shows that being CLI is this very like, I know, I, th I think when you have a definition that's equivalent to a bunch of things, you, you know, it's like an interesting definition because uh, I know it's not, not immediately obvious that these things are going to be equal. So there's, it's kind of. Right. So, uh, so this is the inspiration in, to try to uh, understand the groups that involve us infinity. So this is what, the theorem I want to discuss. And just for non archimedean polish groups, following equivalent uh, G involves S infinity. So I, I guess maybe to make the parallel more obvious, I should have done G is not CLI, should have done the negation. The G involves S infinity. Uh, this is some, some notion I'll define. There exists a locally finite uh, non-trivial 
um, automorphism invariant disjointifying closure operator on M. And three So it should be for all A. So yeah, unfortunately when I'm presenting this, it's in the negation, but it should be parallel. Uh, there exists an A with uh, infinite rank. This is a different rank function. So there's an yeah, infinite rank. So non-ordinal rank. I mean, or equivalently, there's an element that has a rank doesn't have countable rank. And then the fifth one, so I send in again to classification strength. If there's an action of G on some polar space X, which classifies equality plus, then it has to involve this infinity. So equality plus, this lives on R to the omega. And two things are related if, if two sequences are related if they enumerate the same set of reals. So if G can classify equality plus, and G has to be maximal in this in this in this hierarchy. And plus the. You said enumerate, but of course it could, it could be also three images could be different sizes, and that would still be a problem. Three images could be different sizes. Well, the elements of our omega are not one form, so you don't, yeah, you don't care about the arity of the of things. Oh, how many repeats there are? Yes, right. Yeah, it 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 uh. And it, up to Borel reduction, there's no difference between if you allow repeats versus not. Okay, so the answer is yes, it doesn't depend on what you say. Yeah, we, yeah, I, maybe we, yeah, we can just, uh, so we can just say the, this lives on the sequences that are uh, injected. Oh, okay, and so the is not Yeah, let's, okay. yeah, I'm careless about this because it, it uh, there's no increase in complexity if you allow repeats. Uh, that's, that's a good question. And the answer is no, because equality plus is pi zero three. And there are by results of the the fourth Kegger's level paper that there's like equality plus plus. Actually, this was uh this I think. This was already proved before that paper. Uh Arrington, I forget. Yeah, so the, I mean, this is a relatively simple constellation, pi, pi zero three, it's low, low in the Borel hierarchy, but it's already like complicated enough that the only way you can classify it is if you're, if you involve as infinity. And uh, this, just to be clear, one, one implies five is, follows immediately from the, this theorem because the equality plus is induced by the, Natural action of affinity on this case of injective sequences. Yeah. Uh, I think I want to keep that. So there's this. So I'll start by explaining the proof uh, to two implies one. Before I define what this is, I'm gonna motivate it. Um, so there's a, there's already a result that shows, uh, 
that gives one method of showing that G involves this infinity. So this is, uh, as, as far, far as I know, it first appears in uh, the three red herrings around God's conjecture paper, Baldwin, Friedman, Cor Corwine, Laskowski. Three red herrings. So if F is a Farsi class satisfying uh, disjoint or strong amalgamation, whichever term you prefer. Um, and M is the limit of F. Then uh, ought um, involves a infinity. And the idea is very uh, straightforward. So you, you take F and you define this new Fresse class F star, where you just, it just consists of the finite structures in F, but you attach an integer to every, every element. So you color the elements with omega many colors. Um, and then hope that that's the Farsi class. So it might not be, because if you have some, uh, some structure A and another structure B extending it, if you have an element that's uh, well, it's little b, such as b is in the definable closure of A, and if b assigns some color to it, let's say three, and if you have another extension, which, assigns a color four, then there's no way to amalgamate because they, there's no, there's no way to uh, make the, I mean, the, this, uh, they assign different colors and there's no, yeah. So. Um, however, if you have disjoint amalgamation, then you can, you, you know, move this, C's copy of B outside, and then you can give a different color and there's, you can amalgamate. So in order for F star to be just for a class, uh, certainly it's a, it's a sufficient condition for F to be, to satisfy disjoint amalgamation. Oh, and if you don't remember what disjoint amalgamation is, it means if you have an extension B of A and another extension C of A, You can amalgamate them such that the intersection of B and C is exactly right. So some people will call that strong amalgamation. Uh, however, uh, you can ask, well, is there a, a weaker assumption that, that suffices? I didn't understand the yes. end of the week with the thinking about clear and involving this infinity in the color. Oh, uh, yes, yes. Color yes. Is you can amalgamate and others not. So, what's, what's the conclusion? Yes, sorry. Uh, so, yeah, I forgot the whole to explain the whole second part of this. So, F star is a Farsi class. And once you accept that, then you can take the limit. Uh, so this is just a copy of M, but there's uh, colors. Each element has a coloring, and the colorings, the coloring is very homogeneous. So we can. Yeah, you don't. Uh, yes. Well, I mean, if we define F star to be just. All of the copies of F where you allow arbitrary colorings and the limit won't be constant. So F star is, so it's an expansion of that where you've got colors involved and you allow all colorings, so, but then yes. you don't have the amalgamation. Right, you only have amalgamation if- The disjoint colors. Yes. Right. 
Okay, and then the conclusion is that still is the same class. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. 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 Um, so we, we can look at the closed subgroup of the automorphism, automorphisms of, of, of M. So just, I mean, just, just, uh, and just arrange so that if you, the M star is just an expansion of, of M to this language where you added uh, omega many, uh, or you added colorings. So look at the subgroup uh, of automorphisms that just uh, permute the colors around. So, so it's a set, uh, set of set of automorphisms such that if the coloring of color of A is equal to the color of B, and the color of pi A equal to the color by B. So it doesn't preserve the colors. Like it sends pi A does not necessarily have the same color as A, but it, it, it preserves the quality of color. And then uh, there's a very, I mean, there's an obvious continuous homomorphism from H to S infinity. And then you ask, well, is it onto? And uh, you do a back and forth argument. Just using the fact that the colorings are very homogeneous. Um, I, I, I'm not gonna, I just, I just wanna motivate the, uh, this theorem. So we have to use this different, slightly different method. But you can ask, well, maybe uh, maybe a weaker form of disjoint amalgamation works, or maybe you're allowing a disjoint amalgamation under some special circumstance. So maybe there's a closure a closure operator that that that. that uh, I mean, there, there's several ways you can try to weaken disjoint amalgamation. Uh, but it, I'll explain one way that works. The closure operator on M is a function from the subsets of M to the subsets of M such that a is a subset of B, then the closure of A, subset of closure of B. A is a subset of clo closure of A, which is equal to the closure of closure of A. Yeah. And then uh, locally, if it's locally finite means closure of A is the union of the closures of the finite subsets. Uh, non-trivial means, well, for me, non-trivial non means that M is not just a closure of the empty set. Uh, monomorphism invariant. means the obvious thing. So uh, the closure of A is, is closure of pi A is just pi of the closure of A for all automorphism pi. So these are all uh, these. The, the, 
definable closure satisfies all of these, um, except for maybe non-trivial if M is like rigid or something. So definable closure satisfies all these, but the additional property we want is this disjoinifying property. I say for all A, for all A and for all B, C extending A, uh, finite. You can, uh, there's a, there's a automorphism that fixes everything in A, sending C to C prime, such that uh, B intersect closure of C prime is contained in closure of A and C prime intersect closure of B is contained in closure of A. Uh, so this might be a bit, a bit strange. So let me let me say well, if if we take the closure operator to just be closure of a equals a, then that's just joinifying if and only if the the age. Okay, m m is m is ultra homogeneous. If you take this, the closure operator just be closure of a equals a then saying that that's just joinifying is equivalent to saying that just just joint amalgamation holds right. so this would just be c prime this would be a And maybe if we, if we think about uh, trying to show that F star from before is uh, a first state class, suppose maybe the definable closure operator is disjoinifying. And we'd be fine because this A, this B, you'd get them. Arrange B and C such that if if you're in the closure of C, so maybe this is like the closure closure of of C. If you're in the closure of C and you're in B, then you have to be in closure of A. So you can imagine maybe there's some kind of argument you can run similar to the early argument I. Explain. Um, however, I, I don't, it doesn't seem like any kind of uh, similar, like if I say theory type argument seems to work. Um, so it, to use a different strategy. So we so assume we have such a closure operator. And we want to show that we want to we want to produce some sort of coloring that that's uh, suitably homogeneous. So we're going to build up a coloring. Yes. Yeah. When would you not have such a closure operator? It seems yeah. that you you know any sort of hook it up so that you let this thing always. Okay, I'm glad you asked. I, I, yeah, I think it would have been good for me to talk more about this. So yeah, let's. So obviously, like S infinity is going to. I mean, S S infinity is like the limit of. I mean, it's a, it's the automorphism group of the structure with no structure. 
So that's going to satisfy distorted amalgamation. But uh, if, you, if your CLI, it, maybe I'll, I'll explain this case. This is not going to be disjointifying because you pick A and B in the same. Okay. So again, I'm viewing Z omega as the automorphism group of the structure that has an omega sequence of Z lines. So there's the first Z line, second Z line, and so on. So you're just basically you can shift these independently. If you pick A and B and this is the same Z line, then they're going to define each other. So yeah, each Z line is going to have a successor. There's a su successor and predecessor function. So the the uh, the language is is just a language of two func functions: predecessor and successor. By Z line, I mean it's The graph of these functions form make a sequence of z lines. So this is going to be some finite application of S to get from A to B. So B is going to be in the definable closure of A, and vice versa. So there's there's no way to get uh, disjointifying because the closure of the empty set is closure of the empty set of is empty. Closure of of closure of A is the same as the closure of B. Which is this uh, the zero Z line? This this thing. And so, what is your definition of closure? Uh, oh, sorry, the definable closure. I'm explaining why definable closure doesn't work. But in general, you're not assuming that the closure is definable. Have any nice? I mean, it could be just completely arbitrary. Something closure. Yeah. Um. I mean, as it's hard for hard for me to give a. So what is the closure? Yeah, the definable closure of an element is going to be the z line and so on. It's a set of points that are definable. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Right. Yeah, okay. Actually, actually, the language should be there should be also uh, omega many unary predicates. Like you should be able to sort, sort it so you have the zero Z line, the one Z line, and so on. So P0 is these points, P1 is these points, and so on. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, that's a good question. Why, why isn't there some maybe clever way of coming up with a non-trivial just just trying to find closure operator? I, I, I don't have a great. Uh, I can't think of a nice way of explaining why you can't. Well, so I guess there's, there's challenges that there's yeah, I mean, as an as an abstract result of that, you, you can't. Yeah, so naive, that might yes. help with that. So uh, if you just look at the subclass of structures, um, there. The closure of some structure, then this class would have strong amalgamation. So if you just because that's what destroy the body of So if you move to the substructure, that's the closure of some structure that has strong uh, amalgamation property. So if you can't find uh, any object that satisfies strong amalgamation property in your class, it wouldn't have a closure operator. You wouldn't be able to cook it up. You, you, wouldn't be able to strongly, you wouldn't be able to strongly amalgamate anything. If every, amalg every time you can amalgamate, it can't be destroyed. Right? You necessarily need to add points. Then there'd be no hope of creating it. Right? It's, 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 this suggests that the you can do it for objects that are closed. Okay. So we have to see part of you can move things away. Uh, it's not the really existing object. I mean, I mean, 
Yeah, I mean, this is a, it's tough because it seems like at every stage, it's like, why? Well, there seems, seems like something easier that should work, and it just seems like let me maybe explain. Let me explain something else that that doesn't work. Is what if we? Yeah, what if we look at just take f and then instead look at the uh, the, the elements of if we look at the the definable closure of, of structures in f. So take m to be the the limit and, and look at the finitely generated substructures of M, that, substructures that are of, of the form of definable closure of some finite set. May hope that maybe this is like just doing, you can like just join amalgamation holds. Uh, but I mean, it, I mean, you can have a problem where you have some, or B is, uh, B is just going to be A along with B, little b, and C is A along with little c. It, it could be the case that no matter where you move B and C, they both define some element This that's uh, the same element, D. So D is always going to be in the definable closure, A, C, and uh, A, B. No matter where you move, uh, move B and C. V is independent of how B and C move, or it's different for different things. Uh, for all saying, for all C prime isomorphic to C over A. B prime, similar root to B over A. There's this D, which is in. I mean, this is okay. I mean, very vague here, so I, I don't actually. In either case, it's 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 a, it's a pro. Okay, this, this this is this is a bit incoherent. I, yeah, I'm, not, I'm having a hard time explaining why the kind of more obvious solutions don't work. Uh, yeah, maybe it's, it's best I, I move on to what does work and then might explain why. I don't see any law of So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna start building partial colorings of M. So partial coloring C of um, with support n as a function c from the closure of n. So we assume we have some disjointifying closure operator to the integers, and then we have some additional symbol I'm just calling null. So some elements won't be colors. Uh, so by having support n, that means that the coloring of, of uh, a will be null for all a and the closure of n minus n. So only finitely many colors are going to appear uh, in this set, which which may be infinite. We have. Uh, Finite subsets of n. And you have a partial isomorphism pi from a to b. We say it's a, a appropriate with respect 
to the coloring C and uh, some permutation sigma and S infinity, if and only if. It, it the if and only for for all a and the closure of a the color color of sig of phi a is sigma of the color of of a so it moves the colors in the way prescribed by sigma so uh, yeah and then we 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 think of sigma as just sending null null to null also. Uh, sorry, if and only if there's an extension. So it's an anamorphism of um, extending, extending pi, so satisfying this. So pi is just a partial isomorphism from a finite set A to finite set B. So we extend it to all of M. And we're we're applying it just for elements in the closure of A. Yeah. So we're. Yeah, so we, we I, I tried very hard to use some sort of if I say argument like before, and it, I, I, I don't think you can get the colorings to be homogeneous enough. So instead, we're going to uh, form a generic coloring. So I, the next dilemma I'm going to state is going to explain well, if you have a partial coloring and you have some new element that's not in, in A, and you can extend the partial isomorphism and the color, so and the coloring, so that uh, so the the new element will be in the domain of pi, and it's still appropriate. So then you can uh, build, use this to build a generic coloring, which is not as homogeneous, but it's an, it's enough to show that the natural homomorphism onto S infinity. Is actually on to. Oh, I don't want to erase this. I don't want to erase that either. Suppose we have a coloring A, B, I, and sigma as above, and C is some new element of M. Then there's some new element D, an extension uh, extensions uh, C star, phi star. Such that C star uh, also N. N is another symbol support. And along with C and D. And pi star, which is a uh, partial isomorphism from A C to B C is appropriate. Respect to C and Sigma. Okay. So this is where we're going to use the disjointifying property. 
So we're going to, by making A and B bigger, we can assume uh, closure of A intersect N is equal to A, and the closure of B intersect N is B. Um, yeah, I'm going to draw a picture. The rest of this is easy to see by a picture. So is the letter C supposed to go to B? Uh, yes. So it should be A, C, B, right? Sorry. Yes. I guess this is implicit, but. So the picture is kind of weird. I'm going to draw a picture. So this is N. This is the, this is the support of the colorings. This is where all of the non-null colors are uh, assigned for C. Then we can assume, uh, so here's A, A and B. Oh, this is closure, sorry, this is the closure of N. This bit will be the closure of A minus A. This bit is closure B minus B. So the closure of A is not going to in intersect and outside of A, because we can just, we can just, uh, we can assume this is true just by increasing, by replacing A with closure of A intersect N. So just, just set A, A just, it just set A to be, to be this. Okay. And C, C could either, I mean, there's several cases for C, but, one of them is the most complicated. So C could be in here, uh, could be out here, or I guess the most complicated case to consider is out, out here. Now you might think, well, okay, if this C is out here, then it hasn't been assigned a color. So we could just assign it null, take D to be some element. Maybe, maybe you can find D to be some element using the disjointifying or whatever which is not, not colored yet, so we can give it null also. But the problem is we need, uh, we need to be able to color also everything in the closure of AC. And the closure of AC may intersect N. So, I'll define C to be Closure of AC intersect N. So I'll draw like this. So BC inside. I do this the wrong way. C minus A over here. So we need to be able to find, uh, to be able to send this somewhere outside of this entire picture. How can we do that? Well, let's define a D prime to be pi hat of C. So pi hat is the extension of pi to be an automorphism of the, the entire structure. So we have, uh, we have D prime is, uh, contains B and N contains B. So we'll apply the disjointifying to these sets. So we're gonna find an automorphism G. 
So G restricted to B is identity. And the closure, the closure of G I hat, sorry, uh, G D prime intersect B is contained in the closure of, sorry, intersect N is contained in the closure of B. And uh, G D prime intersect closure of N is contained in closure of B. We should leave this lemma up. Okay, so then we let D be G, G image D prime. So I claim that this actually sends D will just be here. So it will send this. So G composed with uh, pi hat will send this here. And so then there'll be no, no problem extending the coloring in a way that uh, You'll be able to just assign the colors in the way you'd have to in order for for this for this uh, larger partial isomorphism to be appropriate. So if we just rewrite this: the closure of D intersect N is contained in closure of B. But uh, closure of B intersect N is just B. So this actually means this is going to be this is going to be exactly B. So the intersection of closure of D with N is just B. And we have from here D intersect closure of N in closure of B. This means that D intersect closure of N is just, it's also, it's also just B. Okay. Yeah, why? Because if you're in if if you're in here and you're being sent into the closure of B, you can't be sent here because there's already a point being sent from here. So you have to be sent here. All right. What does that do with point being sent from going to the main state? What is that? Say yeah. and say right. So our 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 pi star is going to be G composed with uh, pi hat restricted to um, AC AC. But this this has to have an extension so that's it, that it sends the closure of AC to the closure of BD. So we need to check that that this that this sends this this region over here to a place where there's no, going to be no problem giving whatever colors we we want. Okay. So it it already because it extends pi star, it already sends points here to points here. So it's a bijection. Oh, it's bijection. Okay. So so points here have to go. Outside of yes, okay. 
Yeah. And N itself is not fully joined with a I mean, suppose it N were fully joined with a mountain. So why can't that happen? Uh, sorry, what do you mean by closed under okay. mapping? On the face of it, it seems like the end that you have there could be closed under. Oh, right, which is constructing the map. Yeah. Okay, okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. The, the whole the whole point was was to send this bit to some place that's completely just disjoint from closure of n. So, because if we already made commitments to what colors these points have, we might have a problem assigning colors. But as long as we can do this, there's no problem assigning, sending the coloring. This this will witness that uh, this witnesses that this restriction has a has an expansion to an automorphism of the entire structure. Um, and uh, yeah, and any point that's in any point that's in the closure of C, but not in this picture, just just assign it the color null and assign it the color of its image to be null. If it's outside the closure of N, it has to the image has to remain outside the closure of N. All right. Okay. So this is a. This is like a one step extension type thing. So you can always extend. And this is what we need in order to be able to build a generic coloring. Um, so the rest I'm, I'm gonna just say in words. So if you look at all of the variables that go into this, we have uh, a coloring C, which is an infinite coloring, but it, there's only finally much information. It, it, its support is finite. A and B are finite. Pi is finite. Oh. Yeah, finite, pi is finite. Sigma is not it was not finite as, as stated, but somehow only a finite portion of sigma is even relevant here. So we can think of pi, sigma as being a Finite support partial uh, permutation of omega or something like that, such that the the every coloring that appears that's relevant here is 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 in the domain of sigma, something like that. There's there's only finitely many things, so we can enumerate all of these things. So we can enumerate C A, so C C pi. Coloring C, the little c, and sigma. You can enumerate all of these instances in order type omega and allow each thing to repeat infinitely often, and just go through each time, check if it if it satisfies the assumptions, then then uh, extend the coloring um, as as in the con conclusion. And use that to build a generic coloring. So once you have this, then you can do this, basically the same back and forth type of argument that I glossed over from the previous result. Maybe I'll just walk through like the first step or two of the back and forth argument. So fix some. permutation of S infinity, we want to find an automorphism that permutes the colors according to sigma. So start off with the uh, empty, by being the empty partial isomorphism and take C to be the first. Okay, well, you need to enum enumerate, enumerate M, so pick the first element and at some point, you're going to extend the coloring so that A zero is in, is in the domain of the domain of the coloring, and we've extended pi to be a partial isomorphism from A zero to some B zero, and then uh, 
right? And then put, plug in this partial isomorphism, take this partial isomorphism, this partial, this, and uh, the restriction of sigma to uh, some finite set that's still enough to be, to handle all the colorings that are relevant and then apply this thumb again. So now A, A1 is in, the, is in the range, apply, and just keep going to do back and forth argument to build an automorphism that, that Thanks. You know, so good is the uh, is the kernel of the DNA yeah. of the uh, the end one. So so H H is the close of good DNA. So H is the both. Uh, H is the close of good, and uh, the quotient is um is the quotient of H. It's a normal yes. of good of H. In the quotient in a way, and then I think the normal subgroup is just the kernel. Oh, of, yes, yes. Uh, the subgroup. Uh, yeah, the, the normal subgroup is the subgroup that preserves. Yeah. And then there was wasn't there a second problem of, of involving in the last year? Was already similar to that? Yeah. So what are the spaces? Uh, no, that 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 that, that was it. It, it, G, well, G involves the theorem that if you have that, then you have actions on spaces. Then it gives you these. Oh, yeah, yeah. So H yeah. is the uh, you know, automorphism involves the expansion of N with coloring. Uh, it would be the automorphism group of like the equivalence relation. Of saying when two points are the same color. And then I guess you also need to add a unary relation for like the null color or something. So make sure that those don't get 
the scholars don't get changed. Stuff instead of Delta. Yes. I mean, in fact, I mean, any closed subgroup of group of this form is automorphism group of some expansion. Yeah, I mean, the hard part of showing that this is, I mean, basically uh, this this situation happens for any coloring, but in order for this to be on, uh, onto, you need the coloring to be like suitably homogeneous or the coloring to be generic or something like that. So this 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 technical notion of a disjointifying closure operator is, is what I'll use uh, in the next talk to show that classifying equality plus uh, means that you involve as infinity. And there are several stages in the proof where it seems like there should be a more direct, easy easy way. Like there's multiple intermediate notions, um, and it's like mysterious to me if if there is if there is a more direct way, but it, it seems you have to go through something like this. Um, so I'll, I'll do that next week, but for the remainder of today, I, I, I just want to at least what, define what these ranks are, because it'll, it'll give more of an understanding of what this disjointifying closure operator is. Uh, again, we want M to be ultra hom hom homogeneous. You can always take M and make it ultra homogeneous without changing its automorphism group. So given an element A and the tuple B from M, see that the rank, K rank, A B bar is almost zero if and only if A is definable from B bar. For alpha greater than zero, say that the rank A B bar is at most alpha if and only if either one so C such that for all C prime um, isomorphic to C over B bar is a rank of A. B bar C prime is less than alpha or two for all A prime isomorphic to A over B bar, the rank of A B bar A prime is less than alpha or the rank of A prime B bar A is less than alpha. Okay. This is, again, technical, so let me motivate it. If we get rid of two, this is the, this is Deisler's rank. So, Let's let's consider the rank function where you get rid of two. And suppose we have some elements that the rank of a over the empty set is infinite. And let, let, let's find so Dyson's rank detects uh, when when M has a non-trivial L omega one omega elementary embedding, or equivalently when the automorphism group of M is not CLI. So we're going to build this non-trivial elementary embedding or elementary substructure. N. So to be an elementary substructure, at least in the context, this context, if you have some finite set B and you have some element C, you want to find some you want to find some C prime, which is where there's an automorphism sending C to C prime fixing B that lands you in this elementary substructure. This is our like a uh, 
test. The, what is the test for knowing that you have an elementary substructure? Tarski lot test. Tarski test. I'm drawing a blank. Anyway, the, the equivalent of that test for, for the L omega one omega elementary substructure is, is this. It takes a finite set of parameters. Any element of M, you can move it into, into the substructure. All right, well, if, if so far, so we build up N from some finite set. So we have, we have some finite set N. And we want to add, we want to make sure that we can we can expand n to have some c prime. This is, let's say this is the n stage of our construction. We're going to find n plus one, which includes c prime, which is isomorphic to c over n sub n. And we can do that because if the rank of a is infinite, we, we just need to make sure a doesn't get included. That's all we need to do in order to ensure that we have a non-trivial elementary embedding. Maybe the worst case is let's say C is A. So you want to find some A prime in here. Sorry, no, that's not right. Here's the fact that if, if, if the rank of A is infinite, then for any C, you can find some C prime so that the rank of A is still infinite over, over this set. So if the rank of A over N sub N is infinite, then you can find C prime since the rank of A over N sub N C prime is still infinite. This is just like the, another way of writing one. I don't know if that was coherent, but at least that hopefully motivates Dysler's rank. But we have this extra condition. So I, I'll, I'll finish by giving an example of a, a non CLI Polish group which has a, has a rank, an ordinal rank. Uh, with this with this rank. Uh, so this is uh, Knight's model, the Julia Knight. So the language is you have an order and you have n many unary functions. So the, the ordering is, is order type rationals. And for every A, the set of predecessors of A is enumerated by the functions applied to A. For any A, if you apply the functions to A, it enumerates everything before A. So A, A has an enumeration of its predecessors. Uh, and moreover, this can be constructed such that you can always find an isomorphism. You can, uh, so, so as long as, uh, yeah, for any A, the predecessors of A forms an element, omega one omega elementary substructure. So just constructing something with satisfy these properties is not Knight's model. You have to construct it so that it's, it's automorphism group is not CLI. But, but you can do that. Um, but I can show, I'll show that the rank, the rank is one here, so it's not going to, it's on a working group that will not involve this infinity, which is, which is already known, but it's just a, an opportunity to, to motivate this, this rank definition. So if you pick A, the rank of A has to be at least one. 
over an empty set, right? Because for every A prime, one of these is the predecessor of the other. So one of them defines the other because for one of them, you just apply some F, F of N to get the other one. So either A prime is in the definable closure of A or A is in the definable closure of A prime. So this should be K, K rank. This is like one because because of this. Uh, the connection between this rank and the existence of a disjoint fine closure operator is, is very natural, but I think this not enough time. Um, so I'll probably briefly discuss that next week. Otherwise, I, I should make sure I'm answering any questions anyone has. Uh, oh, yeah, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm done. Well, just a, there are, yeah. So there are other versions of amalgamation that are related to embedding. So there are three amalgamation properties and so on, which I don't remember the definition of, but it looks vaguely along these lines because you have three things you want to amalgamate, any two of them might have intersection, but all three of them don't, things like that. So mm -hmm. does that give you uh, some sort of characterization of certain classes of, of those groups? There's, yeah, this is a good question. That's a good question. I'm not sure I can say anything coherent. I know there's there's studies, there's pe people are, are, are studying like strengthenings of disjoint amalgamation, I think. Yeah. And disjoint amalgamation, yeah. Um, but I'm not sure if, if there's, the kind of weakenings of disjoint amalgamation that, and I, I've looked. Uh, I mean, there there are some things that look kind of similar, but uh, I, I as, as far as I know, like this kind of weakening of disjoint amalgamation. I'm not sure if it's. I don't think it's. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 